Earnest money is a deposit made to a seller showing the buyer's good faith in a transaction. That's what we're covering today. The reason we're covering it is we get a lot of questions, especially right now where there's a lot of veterans going into the housing market uh, and them being prepared for this money that they're going to deposit with the sellers, uh, either with the real estate company or an attorney, and what the importance of that money is and really how much money you should you should give. Um, every market is different, right? That's going to be the caveat to today's conversation. In some markets, we see it as high as 5 or 10%. It could be a dollar amount like 5 or 10 or 15 or $20,000. And in other markets, like I just saw the other day, zero dollars and actually that's the first time i've seen that and that was in alabama for of all the states that's what they didn't have an earnest money but that might just be for that specific transaction and every transaction is going to be different and it also shows a buyer's commitment to purchasing a property but a lot of times people will be like well if i give all this earnest money how is that money protected and what really happens to it during the transaction. Uh, this is especially relevant because if you're using the VA home loan, you're not at times, right? And it really depends on what you want to do is if you, you can do no money down and there is no limit on what you can purchase as long as you have eligibility and qualification. We got a ton of videos around that subject so you can empower yourself uh, in this buying process. And if you guys could do me a favor, hit the like and subscribe button for more content like this and please share it with the veteran community. All right, so we got that out of the way. So the earnest money is going to be protected throughout the transaction unless you waive your contingencies uh, on a contract. And majority of the contracts across the country are really standardized, right? Attorneys are the ones that typically draft them. Uh, and they're going to include things like an inspection uh, contingency, an appraisal contingency, a financing uh, contingency. And sometimes in certain states, they use attorneys. So there'll be an attorney review period so they can review the contract for you and make sure you're understanding it. Uh, in some parts of the country, it's just realtors that handle the entire transaction and you have the option of getting your own attorney. Uh, I did that myself in uh, actually in a state that didn't require attorneys and then in a state that did have attorneys. I thought it was great to have them, but obviously there's mixed reviews all around on this. Uh, if you find a good attorney, it's they're worth their weight in gold because depending on how much earnest money you put down, you can lose it. Now, a home inspection or an inspection contingency is basically what it sounds like, right? You have X amount of days to get a home inspection done on the property, review it and be like, hey, you know what? There's too many things that are wrong with this property. I want to back out and get my earnest money back, which makes it nice because if there's you know the, even a gut rehab or new construction is going to have some type of issues that's why we always recommend a home inspection va loans don't require a home inspection but it's encouraged and yes the va does an additional layer of uh, inspection on an when they do the appraisal process but it's nothing like getting a home inspection uh, and the fee and that's gonna rate uh it's gonna range widely the other part is an appraisal contingency. The appraisal contingency is that, hey, if you're buying a place for 300,000 and it comes in at 240 for whatever reason, and the sellers don't go want, don't want to go down on that, then you can walk away from the contract. Now, there's a caveat to that. All VA loans come with a VA mandatory clause, escape clause. Basically, if the value comes in low, you can walk away from the contract if the sellers do not agree to renegotiate. The downside to this is that a lot of veterans think that if you want to waive your appraisal contingency, you can't do that with the VA loan. Yes, you can because a contract will supersede the VA mandatory clause. Everyone's financial situation is different, so you just need to understand what you're comfortable with in that fine in that piece. Now, the other contingency that typically you're going to see on a contract is going to be a financing contingency. Uh, a financing contingency is basically: Are you going to get the loan? And if you get denied, then what happens? 
right? What is going to be the outline or the outcome of that? You really need to understand that. Now, in some markets, what we see is that people waive all those contingencies, which is, I think, crazy. But that's just sometimes when you have either cash buyers come in or different loan types that come in. The VA loan has a bad rep for various reasons. I think it's a great product, uh, but a lot of vendor, veterans work with some of these big company, veteran-focused companies. Uh, they're just not good, and they overcharge regardless. Uh, so that's the challenge. Plus, you got to work with a lender that can close in 21 or less days in certain markets. Other ones don't care. So all of that's factored into these things, right? I'll give you this piece of advice. Make sure that you are reading the contract yourself and not asking someone to skim over it. Because too many times we've seen people get into these situations where they thought they were getting a seller credit and they didn't get a seller credit. You don't want to be in that position. Also, the earnest money that you put down is going to be used towards your closing costs or, or and or your down payment. If you have a seller credit, let's say you put, you're buying a $300,000 place. You put $20,000 in earnest money. You get a $10,000 seller credit and closing costs are $10,000. Well, guess what? The seller credit covers your closing costs. That earnest money that you put down could be used towards the down payment or simply you're just going to get a refund at the time you get to closing. Now, does that specify on a contract how that's going to work? No, it does not. Right? It's not going to say if this money is not used, you're going to get it back. That's just how it works, especially from the title company side, right? Because they're uh, depending on how it, the the state or the wherever you're is structured that process is going to be a little bit different. But at the end of the day, everybody goes to a title company. They're going to have the, you know, whatever earnest money you put down, they're going to have the lender figures and they're going to figure the whole piece out. Okay. So let's talk about some of the uh, common downfalls of, of this piece. Okay. Uh, and this is kind of where, you know, we want to make sure that you're not thinking one part with the contract itself and then ended up being something else. Again, this is why you read it, right? So let's see here are some of the common pitfalls to avoid or actually not pitfalls to avoid. It's like, if you do this, then this will happen. If you decide to cancel your loan after you've met all your contingencies and now you are in breach of the contract, they can keep your earnest money, right? That's probably the most common one that happens. The other piece to that is that if you waive all your contingencies and you decide to back out of the contract, you lose your money. Now, sometimes uh, it could be worth losing that money just because of how bad the house may be and you you know, maybe didn't do due diligence on it. Uh, but it's also hard to do due diligence on a property unless you have a home inspector going with you to showings, which believe it or not, people do hire them to, to do that. It just gets really expensive to do, okay? Uh, discuss with your attorney or your agent if you are starting to have some type of problems or you're thinking like, you know what, guys, this is definitely not going to work out for me. Uh, what can I do uh, to be able to, you know, get out of this contract and survive, okay, and, and get your earnest money back? And there's also times that things are going to happen where you might have to sue someone to get your earnest money back, but most... I'd say that's rare. It doesn't really happen that much. I think I got one situation right now, uh, but that was from like years ago. That's still happening right now. Uh, but most of the time, it's pretty straightforward because all the terms are outlined in the contract. So just, again, make sure that you're reading that and communicating with your team, like your lender, so they can walk you through that entire, pre, uh, in, entire piece. Hope you guys learned some stuff today. Remember, hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll talk to you soon.